Hello, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome. Welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love, light, and sovereignty. I just wanted to just pop on briefly. Um, whenever I have a lot of synchronicities come up or um, common themes in session work when I'm working with other light workers, I like to share it in video and in the collective. And I've been wanting to share this for several weeks now, and I have talked about it in previous videos, but I feel like it's really important to bring it up again in this now moment. Um, the biggest theme, um, and I wanna talk a little bit about the bubbles of truth and reality, and I'll do that in a more extensive video, hopefully within the next two days because it's important to talk about the layers of awakening that people are experiencing. But briefly, when we go through this process of awakening to certain truths or realities, and I wanna branch out a little bit because truth is, our truth is different than other people's truths. We may have believed in one thing wholeheartedly, then we got some new information about that belief or person that we believed in that burst our bubble and made us see things for what they truly were. And now we've switched direction and gone a different path. That is an, an example of learning the truth about something and then shifting to follow the truth um, that we are now experiencing. But what I'm being invited to share is our truths are constantly changing because our reality is constantly changing because we are creating our reality and we are divine creators, creatresses, creatrixes. We are creating and we are becoming a vibrational match to our creation or vice versa. So the more truth that's exposed, the more it changes the truths that we are seeing, feeling, experiencing, and recognizing that much of what we're seeing and being exposed to, or is being exposed and coming up from the woodwork, coming out of the woodwork, right, is based on an old reality, complexity, complex situation, architecture. It's like the matrix. What matrix is it that we are learning the truth about? And I venture to share that we are learning the truth about a 3D matrix. Yet, if we are becoming a vibrational match for 5D, or I'm just using those as general linear terms so it's easy to see a layer. But if we are becoming a match for this fifth dimensional frequency of less duality and more harmony and less, um, hostility and anger and judgment, blame, shame, victim, then that truth that we're stepping into is a whole new world. Therefore, the old truths that we're learning about don't exist anymore. Now, I went multidimensional because of course they're existing, right? They're, we're seeing them, they're playing out in front of us. We might be part of it. This might have been something we were involved in that's affected us greatly. But what I'm sharing is from a higher perspective, that's old news. And it's being exposed before in a 3D vibration, we never would have seen it. It would have been hidden the whole time. Now we're seeing it. Therefore, the truth has already shifted and changed because our reality is shifting and changing. So that's a very multidimensional sharing of, of just to see, uh, it, what I'm seeing going on. It's an echo of the past that is still in the process of being dissolved, integrated, digested, and, and removed. And we are the ones assisting in this. For if we did not, if we hadn't raised our vibration at all or our frequency, none of this would have come out. So in essence, I'd like to share that because many people are so wrapped up in the hopelessness of what's being shown as this echo of, of um, terrible deeds, I want to just talk about us taking a moment to realize how important that is. And what that means is we're here. We can see it because when we're in it 
and it's entrenched, we can't see it. It's hidden from us. It's no longer hidden from us. That's a step, a moving, a movement. It's not stagnant anymore. Things are being shaken up and all of that loose debris is in the process of being reworked, digested, integrated, moved, shifted through, sifted through, realized, so on and so forth. Now, once we look at that, there's still a lot of details and I keep being shown, like you sit, you have all this crap. Let's say you have a pan, it's dirty and you scrub it and all the particles float up. Where do those particles go? Some of them go down, they go down the garbage disposal. They go down the drain, they get washed away. But we're seeing the stuff that was hidden underneath that layer of crap. <laughs> and we're in the process of removing it. Now, that's a good thing. <laughs> However, we're kind of seeing things and going, ew, that's really gross did not know that existed. And what's happening is, I'm not gonna get into the bubbles of awakening. I will do that in a different video because I do think it's important to look at the layers. But we take this and we see things for what they are. But some people are still stuck in the pan. They don't even realize or necessarily see the things that many of those who are awake or in the process of realizing themselves and the reality that they exist in. Some people just aren't there yet. And many uh, star seeds and light workers are surrounded by those that are just not at that same level. And that's what I wanna talk about because it's not about being here, us being here and somebody else being there. From a higher expression, we're all aspects we're all creators they're choosing to create their unconsciously and we're choosing to create consciously for the easiest way of looking at it they may not even realize that they're choosing but they are choosing and making a choice as are we the more conscious we become about our choices and our actions and how we react assists in more of that debris getting flushed out, brought to the surface because we raise the frequency. It's just like an, a Sonicare toothbrush, right? It vibrates and it vibrates at such a high frequency that other stuff can't hang on. And that's what's been going on. It doesn't make it any easier sometimes to see though the stuff that's been stuck to that pan, right? All the stuff that's been hidden and caked on and is now hanging on for dear life, but it can't. And so moving forward, this can make us feel alone at times. It can make us feel isolated because we may have believed in something strongly and now we've seen the light, been red-pilled as everybody says. If you haven't watched The Matrix, that's what that reference is for. My, but. At one point, we were blue-pilled. And so it's important to be the purple pill, <laughs> to see things that we are the red and the blue, because we've been both. And stay in being in that place of neutrality and recognizing that some people are in the blue pill, some people have chosen the blue pill, it is a choice. Because we are in a place of choice. That's what Earth is. Granted, many things have been hijacked and that's a whole other video, but I just want to talk about that isolation and feeling. And a few, I've been seeing this a lot when I've been working with others and it's common. We all go through this. We all feel lonely at times, looking around going, am I the only one? Yet if you go on social media, we see that a lot of people have, have been red pilled. But one of the things I talk about with other star seeds is that that movie, for example, The Matrix, the reality that Neo wakes up in, that sees The Matrix, is only one layer. Go multidimensional for a moment. We wake up, let's say, that we're in a program, or that we've been programmed, or this person is lying and this person is actually telling the truth. But what happens is, we have to recognize from there 
that that's only one layer of reality too, because then there's another one, and then there's another one. So the less we hang on to certain belief systems, and the more that we can just find our space of neutrality, the easier it becomes for us to recognize that this is part of our process. So for, uh, for those of us not seeing the layers and not seeing the uh, recognizing that we are not alone, we are not alone. Many of us have gone through this and we will possibly continue to go through it again because it's bubbles of awakening. It isn't just one thing. It's not just one red pill that opens us up to everything, like the movie The Matrix. Even Neo in the movie had to go through layers and stages. He took the red pill, but he had to work at it. It isn't necessarily sunshine and rainbows for him either, right? If you watch that movie, he had to go through and train so that as he awakened more and more and more of the truth, it wasn't just one truth. He had to learn and he had to walk through life from a new reality in order to understand the layers of that reality. So part of this is about us coming back to our own ability to just integrate, to do the basics. And that's where I'm getting to at all of this. The more isolated we feel, the more it's a signal to us that we need to connect with Mother Earth. We need to reach out and maybe find those that are in our soul group. And I'll tell you what, Instagram is a great tool. Facebook is a great tool. YouTube. And look at the people that are talking with one another and connect and reach out. Send somebody a message. Book a session with somebody. Go and do an, an energy exchange with somebody else who maybe does whatever it might be. Energy work, QHT, massage, um, light therapy, sound therapy. Go on a retreat. I know it's hard with COVID and everything going on, but it isn't as difficult as we might think that it is. So for myself, I write more. I do more body movement. I um, connect with people that I wouldn't usually think to connect with, like my neighbors. And in those moments, I've had these beautiful recognition that, wow, my neighbor's actually more like me than I realized. Not 100%, and I wanna get to that in just a moment, because no one is ever going to really 100% let me rephrase that. Most people that we connect with are not necessarily ever going to see things truly the way that you see things or the way that I see things. And that's okay. However, when we do find people that we can resonate with, that we feel comfortable around, that can assist us in feeling less alone on this journey. And that does involve us sometimes stepping outside of our comfort zone. And it is also about timing because a lot of other people are going through this too. And when we feel alone, most of the time we retract, we go within and that can create that uh, feeling of complacency, a numbness. And let me go back into this just a moment as well and talk a little bit about sensory overload. A lot of people are fried right now. They took the red pill, right? And it's like info, info, info. And now they're fried. And the nervous system is like, does not compute, can't process. That's another reason why it's really important to let that integrate and unplug. We know this, yet we're curious. We wanna look up, it's like turning on the news just to see what's going on out in the world. It doesn't matter some days. We don't need to do that every day. We really need to recognize that we are the creators. What do we want to create? 
It's okay to plug in, but that in itself can make us feel more isolated and alone. So getting back to the basics is always important. And each person has their own gifts. And if you're not sure what your gift is, reach out. Do a session with somebody. Do more body work so that something can then reveal itself in an aha moment that you couldn't necessarily feel before you did the body work session or the yoga session or reached out to a friend and had an enlightening conversation. Because sometimes when we're so plugged in to that construct, even if it's a truth construct, it's distraction. It's pulling us out of present moment awareness. It's pulling us out of neutrality. And it isn't always consistently a good tool to use. It's only meant to be used temporarily or from time to time. So I just wanted to kind of share that that's such an ongoing theme right now. You're not alone. We've all experienced this. I still go through moments when I'm having some integration and I see things that nobody else sees. And I have these thoughts like, well, is that real? Or I used to. Uh, what does this mean? Who can I talk to about this? Who can I tell? I do videos, I share with you guys. But my point is, then a week later, somebody else that I tune into will be talking about the same thing. And I'll go, oh, okay, now I see where I was going with that. We all go through that. And it's important for us to find our space of self-care, self-love, so that we can not fry ourselves and then get sucked into this, the washing machine cycle, right? You get sucked in with all the debris and see it for what it is. But we have to recognize that we're the water, we're the air, we're the light, right? We're the shadow too. And once we get back into that space of today, it'd be really feel good to garden. Today'd be really a good day to call that friend that I've been thinking about. And I don't know why I've been thinking about them. Today be a really good day to actually book an astro astrology session because I've always been curious. And maybe having that conversation with that astrologist, for example, or, or animal card reader or energy intuitive reading, right, can help us just take a breath. It sometimes just takes an hour talking to somebody else that you connect with and you can just go, you know, I knew this. I just needed somebody else to tell me that I'm not crazy. And if you're feeling really down and feeling really isolated and alone, it's okay to ask for help, to talk to a counselor, to talk to an intuitive coach, to acknowledge it. We've all been there and we're all going through it even right now at times. So I just wanted to share, this is part of the journey. There's so much more I could go into, but for now, in love and light, get those feet barefoot on the earth, breathe the air, take those Epsom salt, rock salt baths, sea salt baths, get working with um, animals, volunteer, connect with those friends that you haven't talked to in a while. Maybe see if your neighbor just wants to sit on the patio and have a little talk about their life. You just never know where that might lead into read that book that you've always wanted to read take that class online that seemed interesting even if it's a little spark because it may not be the end know all be all but it might be just the thing to pull uh, us out of feeling isolated to pull us into a different i never thought about that before so um i'll have more more much more to share but in love and light namaste